Here's the next stage in respiration. In our last video, we talked about glycolysis, which is the first stage. And from glycolysis, we made, uh, and the final product is the pyruvate molecule, which is a free carbon molecule here. Um, what happens next is the link reaction. So this part, this aspect here is the link reaction, and that is the Krebs cycle. From pyruvate, we make something called acetal coenzyme A. Now, acetal coenzyme A is a two carbon molecule. So that means that from pyruvate to acetal coenzyme A, we have to have lost a carbon somewhere. And this is why, one of the reasons why, anyways, we breathe out carbon dioxide, and it's because we've lost one here. And this particular reaction is what we call decarboxylation. And on the other hand, uh, apart from losing the carbon dioxide, uh, we also need to rearrange the structure of pyruvate a little bit uh, to make, acet make the acetal group. Um, so therefore, we also have the NAD coming in again to do the same reaction, which is to steal the hydrogen from pyruvate. In this process, NAD becomes reduced, meaning pyruvate, having lost the hydrogen, it becomes oxidized. And therefore, this link reaction uh, is also what we call an oxidative decarboxylation reaction. And what you can see here as well is that the acetal group was formed from the pyruvate and it joins in with coenzyme to make acetal coenzyme A. And the reason for that is just that we can stabilize it temporarily before going into the next cycle there, uh, which is the Krebs cycle. Here, what you have is uh, acetal coenzyme A breaks down to release the acetal group, and that is the key bit that goes into the cycle here, like so. And the coenzyme A is then recycled uh, to release re to receive another acetal group. What happens here is that acetal, the acetal group is a two-carbon molecule, and it joins with something called oxaloacetate, which is a four-carbon molecule. And in this reaction, and when they combine, they make a six-carbon molecule, which is what we call citrate. Uh, you may have heard of citric acid, it's the same thing. So this is a six carbon molecule there. And in this process, what happens is citrate undergoes uh, multiple steps to regenerate oxaloacetate, and it, obviously it goes on and binds with another uh, acetal group to regenerate it again. And the whole point of this process is that we can generate lots of uh, products in the middle, which, we, uh, which will be sent off in the final stage, uh, which is the oxidative phosphorylation. So there are different things we can consider from citrate, which is a six carbon molecule. It goes off to make a five carbon molecule here, and then it goes to make a four carbon molecule here, and then it goes on with different stages. The few, first few stages are basically exactly the same in link. They are just all oxidative decarboxylation. What I mean by that is here, citrate goes off to make a carbon dioxide, hence it goes from six carbon to five carbon, and then also, uh, the NAD comes along to become reduced. And to save space, I'll just draw um, the, the final product that was made. But in this case, imagine the NAD coming here, picking up the hydrogen, becoming reduced. The next stage is exactly the same. Again, it loses a carbon dioxide, hence making a four carbon molecule, and then a reduced NAD is also being made in this process. Then it changes a little bit, just a little bit. What you'll then get is that an ADP comes along and uh, becomes phosphorylated. So again, it's an example of substrate level phosphorylation, which then obviously contributes to our final um, net gain of ATP. We have uh, another coenzyme this time, which is uh, uh, what we call an FAD. And unlike reduced NAD, each reduced FAD can make two ATP. And then finally, we got another reduced NAD that was being made like this and then we go back to oxaloacetate and then the whole cycle continues so this goes on on and on and on and to generate all of these products and remember here we've got from this one pyruvate molecule we made one two three four reduced NAD and we made one reduced FAD we made three carbon dioxide molecules and one ATP and remember that carbon dioxide is just a byproduct which we breathe out. ATP is our final goal, and the reduced NAD and reduced FAD are what we want, and they all feed into the final stage, which is oxidative phosphorylation. And there you have it. So we've got our link reaction, and then we got our Krebs cycle here. Just a few things, really. We talked about the fate of the different products already. 
just to keep in mind, again, there are a couple of different things here. Uh, losing a carbon dioxide is what we call decarboxylation, D meaning removal or lose. Carboxyl usually refers to carbon dioxide, hence decarboxylation here. Uh, NAD becoming reduced NAD is what we call the oxidation of the actual substrates, hence why we call it an, oxidased, an oxidative reaction. So this again, ATP is being made, which is an example of substrate level phosphorylation, meaning that we made ATP without the use of electron transport chain or ATP synthase, but merely from uh, an unstable intermediate. And there you have it, link reaction and Krebs cycle.